come back and what I just said to you about my, my main reason for leaving because I had a chance initially to to GA here mm -hmm. or go take a job at Tennessee Chattanooga and uh, at that time I didn't want to leave I just felt it'd be better for me career-wise like I said to kind of branch out and learn from some different coaches mm -hmm. and, and build my own personal resume and once this job came open, hopefully be welcome back with open arms. Did you talk to Brian first before you officially said yes to kind of make sure he was cool with moving to wide receiver, that sort of thing? I didn't talk to him about that. And yeah, I always okay. thought that, you know, Brian and I stay in, in pretty good contact throughout the years. And we talk about a number of different things from football to recruits to, to family stuff. So, I mean, we're pretty, we've been pretty close uh, really ever since I came back as a strength coach and was hanging around him and trying to learn from him. But I did reach out to him and kind of talk to him about the dynamics of the program and what he thought about it. We did kind of miss a little bit about the scenarios that would have to happen for me to come back. How much uh, uh, exchange of information have you had since then? I mean, obviously the running back situation has gone well since BMAC has been uh, in charge of that position. How, how do you feel like that transition is going to affect, you know, the offense general? I think it'll be a smooth transition. I think it helps out with Brian still being here. Um, I have some familiarity with those guys. Obviously, Keith was coming in right when I was leaving out, so I know him a little bit. And, uh, you know, Quavon was kind of the same deal. Um, I met him a couple of times at some camps uh, when I was a shrimp coach and you know, come, and, come and make some jokes with him. But uh, I told the guys when I first met with them that you know, I know a lot more about them than they probably know about me. Just, obviously, I've had a different, you know, different jobs at Wisconsin, you know, at, uh, at Marshall, Georgia State, Tennessee, Chattanooga. But I, was, I always kept that G up under my, you know, whatever logo I had on. So I followed those guys and tried to keep in contact with them uh, from afar and kind of watch what they were going, uh, what was going on with them. But, it's been well so far. He's done a great job with that room of recruiting, developing those guys, and I got some big shoes to fill. But I'm excited about it, and I think I'll be okay. Charles, how much better equipped do you feel to, to take on this kind of job after your experience the last couple of years, and especially at Wisconsin and Coach Melvin? Yeah, last year was huge, man. Um, I obviously had a chance to walk, walk into a, a pretty talented room there uh, when Thomas Hammond left to take a job at the Ravens, and, and uh, I was able to kind of work some work some avenues to get a chance to interview for that job, and obviously that interview went well. It was great to be around a guy like Melvin. I was so talented, but at the same time, you know, show aside, there are some humble superstars out there. You know, he was a guy that, when I came in, could have just told me, you know, shut up and just watch me work. You know, but he was a guy that was very humble and wanted to learn, wanted to grow. So I probably learned as much from him as he probably did from me. So I think it doesn't prepare me for, you know, coaching a high profile guy, you know, learning how to manage him in, in day in and day out, and, and really you know, practice reps wise and, and making sure he stays as healthy as possible throughout the year. Thomas having 